That's new. <laughs> Interesting. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the 46th episode of The Get Down. My name is Cream. Gary W. here. I want to start this episode with something that I heard on another podcast. Um, and passion, it, it, the, the, the quote is, passion requires suffering. And I, it really hit home I, because our industry has suffered for how long? A year and a half, right? Year and yeah. seven, four months, whatever it's been. Four, yeah, 14, 14 solid months. From, you know, security guards to managers to bartenders to barbacks to owners, everyone has been suffering. Yeah. And I think New Jersey opened and this weekend was a celebration. It was just that. It was a celebration of life and freedom and being out again. And it was incredible. And like, I just feel like the suffering is kind of op over. And, and all these people who are really passionate about nightlife or DJing who haven't been able to like really feel that joy and love were able to feel it. It, it went on for not just the industry people, but you could see the patrons, the people that love to go out, the people that support us, the people that support the bars that we work at. Yeah. Uh, and the people that support the music that we play, you know, whether it be downloading and listening in their car, or, you know, listen to mixes of ours or whatever it is. Like you can tell like the relief, there was a sense of serious relief. I wasn't even up there and I could see it, yeah. you know, it was all, it was, written all over social media. Um, I was definitely a little jealous. I didn't get to play a venue up there this weekend. Uh, but, you know, I, there's going to be a lot of opportunity moving forward here. Um, we, we asked a question to every DJ that we've had on and every producer who, I guess, everybody's DJs that we've had on. And the question was always, you know, did the pandemic hurt or help your business as a DJ? Well, I pose that question to nightlife as a whole, because going into this nightlife was dying in my opinion, like die, like it was, it was, you could see where, I don't know if people were just bored of hearing the same sets or whatever it was, but I, I don't think the energy was there that might have been there in years prior. Um, and now like you have this kind of yearning to get back out there and be out with people and appreciate the music that's being played and appreciate the, the venues and the people that work there because we all do after a while start to take things for granted. Right. And having that taken away from you for such an extended period of time makes you want to get back into it so much more. Um, and you could just see the relief on people's face, even standing in line at DJs in the pouring rain and cold in a hurricane essentially. But that's like the, that's the commitment to wanting to go out and have a good time, you know, uh, that you saw this weekend that I, I don't know what I heard the weather was bad. Um, and I heard it was cool up there. It was the worst weather of any holiday weekend that I could ever remember. So think about, and I know this is very specific to, you know, what people have been waiting. It's this pent up demand, but think about that. That weather happens in years past and you have half that line. There's still going to be the line at DJs, especially. Yeah. But some of our other venues that doesn't have, that don't have the, um, the following and the and the faithful following that DJs has still were packed. It's not everywhere packed. was everywhere packed, was busy. Dance floors packed, everywhere. shoulder to shoulder, fun times. You know, our our guys sent a lot of video and pictures, and 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 it looks great. So, what you know? Do we see this as an upward, upward momentum, upward trajectory into obviously the rest of the summer, but beyond? Yeah, I think the short answer is yes, absolutely. Because I, I personally think that from now until New Year's, it's going to be good and it's going to be good everywhere. And I, I think that, that for a couple reasons, but, 
you, you started this whole thing with asking the question, like, did the pandemic help or hurt nightlife? And obviously we were hurt for a period of time, but I think for the long run, it's actually going to help everybody. Right. Because as you said, things were kind of like stale and dying and, you know, it, it, it was slow at, at a lot of the places, you know, like even yeah. during times when it wasn't supposed to be, and it was getting weird and, and venues were closing and, you know, there's, there's a, a lot of change happening. I think this helped kind of really weed out the places that weren't going to survive. It helped weed out a lot of the people in the industry who weren't here to really be in the industry, you know, really an interesting take here outside of just industry folk, right? And uh, people that work in the industry is we felt like nightlife was dying because nightlife used to be a place where you would go out and meet someone. And that really drove people to go out, right? Think about it. Like the, the, at least my friends, like they would go out more when they're single. Why? Because yeah. you're going to meet, so you're going to go that's, try to meet somebody. That's the whole point of going out when you're single and in your 20s, right? Isn't that the point? I don't know. I, I guess I wouldn't I, know because I think so. <laughs> but, but when we, when we when I was in my 20s and single, that was why we went out. Like, yeah, we wanted to go listen to good music and drink and dance and have fun, but we wanted to go meet girls. Right, of course. So, as things like Bumble and dating apps became more nor like normal. Like that's just the normal way that you meet people. Right. It took away from the nightlife um, scene. Now you go, you know, you go 14 months without like now everything's this way, you know, Zoom, um, FaceTime, et cetera. You have like this need to go out and interact with people in actual person. Yeah. You know, you know how many hugs I gave DJs this weekend? <laughs> A lot of hugs. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. It, it poses a, a, more of a psychological question, I guess, in, 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 you know, human behavior, but yes, I think that, and that's why it's going to help our industry in the long run, because there is this absence, there was this absence of human contact that now you get to have that. And you don't mind being jammed in a room shoulder yeah. to shoulder, you know? Right. Like people get their vaccines, their, their worry kind of goes away and some people just don't care at all anyway. And then it's just right. like, right. Yeah. So it, it's, it, it obviously hurt a hundred thousand plus businesses that shut down, right? Yeah. This, that, that, that question unfortunately cannot apply to them because they're not coming back. Um, but I think just in a general night life sense, if you survive, if you figured out ways to, stay afloat during this pandemic and you survived it. Well, I think there was a huge benefit for sure this weekend in New Jersey because money came pouring across the, the bar for sure. Yeah. Right. Um, and definitely a nice little kick that these bars and, and, and clubs and lounges definitely needed and restaurants definitely needed. Um, and I'm just really happy for, for the ownerships the, uh, and the, and the management and all the people that, like you said, did suffer through this and was patient enough and lucky enough to be able to wait it out. Um, and that's a huge part of it. A lot of these people, people were just lucky, right. You know, and, and, and are fortunate to come out on the other side to see the, the jubilation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think, I think this weekend was like the perfect storm for people going out because while there was an actual storm, you know, like people that were moving into their Hamptons houses or shore houses or whatever beach houses that people might go to in your market. And we had the, the bad weather, which was like, no one's going to actually go to the beach. So what else are you going to do, but go to the bar? And like, so that's amazing. I, I didn't even think of that. That's amazing. Yeah. So when I, my first set with a dance floor back a hundred percent and open was DJs, which <laughs> is incredible. It was also really intimidating because I walked in the room at 3.30. There was like 800 people there. The music was low. They were playing like rock music. And I'm like, oh God, like, what do I do? I'm, I'm dead sober. I'm like, I walk in the room expecting it to be, you know, like some fill, some, some people, but not like that. Whoa, and, whoa, and, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. 800 people, 3.30 p.m. on Friday. 
No, that's not even the thing. That's uh, fine. I expect that, right? This weekend. Didn't expect them to just be playing like rock music, like whatever. Well, normally so the happy you got hour to like, there is like chill, you know? It's, you got it's, to like come on. I Did came on. Play I, like I, a, I played. I still wanted to do my job in the, in the overall structure of the night, right? I'm playing happy hour. There, there's, you know, normally DJ's happy hour is a mixed crowd. There's some older people. They do like a free buffet in the back. So you get like the locals <laughs> that come hang out, the lifeguards come hang out. So usually in the beginning, it's more of a chill vibe, you know, like playing some like cool beachy stuff for the first hour. Then we start getting into the house music vibe. Sure. So Nico, uh, Nico was DJing. He was one of our, one of our good friends, uh, owner of Grip Tins. If you don't know what that is, that is super cool. Go check out Grip Tins on Instagram. Yeah. Um, but he was playing and he would normally do like bingo, but there were so many people that he couldn't do bingo because right. it was just a C. So yeah, I played like fun shit. I was playing like Jackson five. I play like Miley Cyrus, like all of that stuff to get people like singing and having a good time first. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, cool. and then like slowly built, not even slowly built it up, but like, yeah, had to I'm going to post a video this week, go on my Instagram and just please watch the video of me playing calling at about 6 p.m. It's yeah, it like the incredible. greatest nightlife video I've ever taken. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Hands down. Not even close. It was insanity. It was insanity. Every set I played this weekend was awesome. It was amazing. Everywhere I played. It was I'm amazing. surprised you're alive. It's too, We're recording this on Tuesday, guys. I'm surprised Scream is up and running at this point. You know what? This morning, I woke up really hungover because I played DJs again yesterday. Survivor Party, which is normally another slow day at DJs, was jam-packed. Yeah. And it was so yeah. much fun, man, listening to uh, DJ Sub, Subi Dubs, listening to um, Brendan O'Neill crush his set. Hang out with Carlos Melange, hang out with Castro, Damian Anthony, Za, like all the get down. It was like so much fun yesterday. It was Sick. tons of DJs, tons of nightlife people. And like it was emotional, man. Like you could feel yeah. like that, you could feel how emotional it was. That's awesome. It was, it was amazing. It's something I'm never gonna forget this whole weekend because it was just that um yeah, that Monday party. Well, that Monday party, I guess, acted more like the the usual Sunday party there, where it's a, just a lot of DJs in the building, a lot of industry people, um, because that's essentially who hangs out there every every single Sunday. Yeah, ton of DJs. Industry. Uh, so that's kind of what that acted I mean, as. Six two six on Saturday was incredible. Wicked Wolf on Saturday was incredible. What time did you play Wolf on? on? Four to four to nine, and then right to six two six. And that was like a, a, a it was a party. A party. That's it was a awesome. Party. Yeah, it, it was a party. It was awesome. Man, that's awesome. I mean, can't wait to get back and 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 do it all. And a little nervous about it, like you said. Like that's you. You got to be a little une, uh, uneasy going into your first set where it's like, and you know, people are going to be jamming. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, I mean, I I've been DJing through this whole time, so like that helps. You know, when you're when you're DJing. Right. And you, when you you're kinda, put in front of a room, you just kind of, you go, you know, you feed off the energy and you go. Right. Yeah. But I think if you haven't really been DJing in a lot, a lot, and you're thrown back into that situation, it's going to be like a yeah. little nerve wracking at first. For sure. Definitely. Oh yeah. I mean, I, right. I had a small dance floor when I was back about a month ago and, or three weeks ago, whatever it was. And it was like, uh oh, like got to stay on it. Like got to stay on, like, what you know, do not lose the dance floor yeah. kind of a thing. So, yeah. So yeah, I mean this this should carry us then if it's this should carry us into the fall, no problem. Right. And just be a really nice shot in the arm to an industry that, like we said, has been beaten down. Um and then even if it does slow down like in a January and a February, then like at least there is this influx of money that has come through the doors to really get these places back on track. Like, listen, sure, PPP and all that stuff and all these loans definitely have helped places out, but getting money back across the bars is, is that's, what's going to keep the doors open and, and keep us all employed at the end of the day. So, you know, hopefully everybody keeps doing their thing behind the deck. Don't get lazy, you know, don't get complacent. Don't, you know, get comfortable. Don't take things for granted. That's the, that's the main thing, right? You, you, we can't get lazy. Yeah. Um, and the industry people can't get lazy. Like 
those bartenders that are having a great time, like continue that and continue the entertainment behind the bar. There are bartenders at 80 river are incredible. There's so much fun. I was talking about it with Greg, uh, yep. UFO. So two days ago that like our DJs like to go play that room, not only because people have fun there, but the staff is having a great time. Yeah. You know, big shout to hope behind the bar at 80 river. She does a great job at doing that and getting yeah, energy. V also V we've been working with V for too. how many years? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're doing a great job over there and they're just fun to be around. And that's, 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 that's a recipe for success though. Like all the places we always talk about that we like playing at or that we were fun and, and customers had a good time always have that aspect of the DJs and, and the staff being friends and hanging out and like, when the staff's having a good time, customers are going to have a good time because we've all been to the bar where you, you're there and the, 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 the bartender has like a resting bitch face. And you're like, well, why are you being like, you're supposed to be in hospitality. Like why you look so miserable. Like, right. Right. Like a wet blanket behind the bar. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, it's a full circle experience and everybody needs to be involved. And when they're not, that's when your place becomes just another place to grab a drink. Right. And, and that's it's not what, a destination for nightlife. DJ's is a destination because like I, I was explaining like West bar and, and that situation to my parents this weekend. Cause I was showing them the videos of everything that you guys yeah. were doing over there. And they're like, that's incredible. That's why people go there. Right. Because like they're showing up with signs. They're on the fucking on. They're on the, um, on the bar. They're having a competition with the bar across the right. way. Like all the people at West bar are chanting for their bar and all the people who hang out at East bar are then, chanting against them like it's right. just a cool... and that didn't happen because the patrons wanted that to happen that happened because the bartenders got involved and they made a scene out of out of nothing right yeah that and that's that's a when you walk in it's an experience it's a it's a visual experience it's an audio you know an audio experience it's just everything you know and you get you just get smacked in the face and that makes a great venue um and it's not just DJs. I know we talked about DJs a lot so far, but it, it's other venues that are like that as well, you know? Yeah, I mean, listen, Wicked Wolf is like that. Yeah. A lot of the places that we work at. I mean, even Give 626 is like that also. I know they've had like a good amount of turnover through the pandemic, but like we're starting right. to build that up again, you know, like with Eddie behind the bar. Oh, and incredible. And um, incredible. It's just, it's just good. I think that that's like a very important aspect of a successful night. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And then I think the other thing for, for you and I, like, obviously again, our, our get down business was like greatly, greatly hurt, but I think a lot, a lot has come out of this, right? Like we've reorganized our, our DJs and like, we were able to kind of grow and get, get some younger guys involved and, and, you know, the get down university thing was great. We got to kind of help and coach and, and mentor a bunch of DJs who are like all doing their thing, which is a great to see. And they're helping us now in turn right. with, with bookings that we need more DJs kind of thing, right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it did, you know, when, when we, when we go back and ask that question to ourselves, cause I don't know if we, I don't know if we have gone over that. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you kind of give a small synopsis of it just then, but like, it, when you go and ask ourselves, yes, it did. We, we are lucky enough not to have a lot of overhead, right? We don't have a brick and mortar, had an office prior to this, but like, you know, you have a lease and the lease runs out and you're yeah. lucky enough to be able to just pay that lease. And then, you know, that's water under the bridge and that's something we had. And maybe you go get back to that. Right. But we didn't have to put asses in seats and serve drinks and, and serve food and to, yeah. to, to stay alive. Right. Um, but at the same time, there were still bills to be paid and, you know, we, we did pivot and whether we knew it or not, I don't think we knew it, that we knew that GDU was going to feed, get down DJ group almost like immediately. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really foresee that. That wasn't the plan. That was never the plan. No. Right. Right. Kareem and I don't really talk like we're having this conversation full on like live <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> Just so you know, this wasn't pre-planned. Like we didn't sit down and say, okay, we're going to create a, uh, 
a, a teaching service for DJ business and then make that a feeder to get down DJ group. That was never, ever the idea. Like a farm system. It literally you know? is like a farm system, but like it worked out that way. And, it did. and we like all the things that we think are important in nightlife, like they then watched and learned and, and hopefully they're implementing those things when they go work. So like, why wouldn't we use those guys and girls, right, you know? Right. Never thought about it that way, but yes, absolutely. And it, it's <laughs> kind of funny that because I guess when you're, when you're not, I guess I know when you're teaching, you're instilling values and certain things into play, into people. And they, those people that are, that take to it are usually in line with your thought process, let's say. Right. Right. They, they didn't sign up because they don't think that, you know, they didn't sign up and, and like, like, okay, this sucks. I'm out kind of a thing. Like they looked at it and said, okay, this is what they're offering. I'm into this. I line up with this and let's right. do it, you know? And so they, it, it's crazy. Like these people just, it's not crazy. These people just fit in with, right. Our, because we were putting something out into the world, right? Like we were putting out videos and we were putting out podcasts and all this stuff talking about all the things that we think are important and what makes a good DJ. And I feel like a lot of those same like-minded people kind of like came Gravitated. to us, you know, yeah. like it, it just like, I don't know. I think you put out some, something good into the world and like, you find your tribe in that way and people that, that like you said, the, the same values. And I think that's really important. And, and like a lot of the young guys that are now working with us are getting great feedback. And like, that's great to hear too, because that's the number one thing for us, right? Like if venues are giving us good feedback on DJs, we're going to keep using them. They're, they're getting great feedback. And also when they come out to hang out and support, they just fit in with the group really yeah. well. Like they're just, we always say this, right? Like we want to work with people that we're friends with and we're cool right. with. Yeah. Yeah. And it, ju and it, it works out, but because of all those things that we just said, so pretty cool. Yeah. It's really cool. And like, this is a lot of these guys are the future of, of nightlife, right? Like, yeah, for are. sure. You know, you got, you know, the Angela, the kids of the world, the olive oils of the world, you know, you have Sasson coming up. That's that's young and hungry, and and just a lot. Just every honestly, all the young kid, uh, the young guys that we're working with are just doing a yeah. A but I think even job. even like Dario and and well, Greg and I, it's funny. I look at Dario as so like Dario, well established. Now. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I want to mention those guys too because like uh, we talked to Greg about how like the pandemic hurt him. I feel like the most because he was like ready to go, and I think he's yeah. starting to realize that like he's still gonna go. Yeah. So I'm excited for, for UFO. So because Greg's the truth and like, he's, he's just good. We might have to have Greg circle back on the pod here and, and give us uh just an update on what's happening. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. I mean, Dara's the truth. Tone set has been crushing it for us. Like yeah. Doug spin, like all our guys are just fucking dope. I'm yeah. so happy that like they're my friends and that we work <laughs> together and like we get to hang out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, so just one other thing, like this this weekend, we we've got my my th long time Thursday residency is coming back this week. So this Thursday is the first one. I'm really interested to see how that goes for numerous reasons. Off nights really haven't been a thing. Nope. Um, so this is like the first Thursday party that I know about that that's really coming back and trying. Yeah. There might be, uh, I was going to say in the city, but no, the city's definitely not, there hasn't been anything on an off night. Um, no, I mean, they haven't been open. They just got their, right. their 4 a.m. I think, I think they're, I think a lot of their stuff is, is getting lifted. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I saw a video that, that Cuomo said something today, but I'm, I'm not positive. Hmm. So yeah, I'm really interested. This, this is going to be really a, a test um, and, you know, to, to see where, where those off nights are going to go. Right. Like off the, off the bat, can you go a year and, and four months without th having your Thursday party and just start it back up and have a jammed house? Like, I don't know. I know that the DJ lineup is really dope and a lot of our DJs and a lot of other DJs and industry people are going to be there hanging out. So there's going right. to be a good base of those people to start it. The question is, do the regulars who used to always be there every Thursday, because we had a massive like regular following, like, do think, they come back? I think with the correct promotion over the next 
day and a half here, yeah, you probably do get this, you know, welcome back kind of a party. Yeah. Maybe Thursday goes off really well, and, and then it's really interesting to see what the following Thursday looks like. I don't know. You're going into summer, too, which actually is really good for the Thursday party up north. Right. The, the summer part, the Thursday party was always better in the summer. And then football season hits and it's kind yes. of not as good. And it starts right. later. Right. Right. Because people, well, summer, summer Fridays, summer, summer Fridays, Fridays that work. And, and people really... who, who live up here and go to the shore, they come out on Thursday, no matter what. And then they shoot down the shore Friday morning. Right. So that it's a really good time to start it. I think if, if you don't really know the market, it looks stupid. Right. right. This looks like a, 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 a move that is amateur and you're looking at, at a money grab. But in, in the in the grand scheme of things, that's the party to start. Yeah. So I yeah, hope so it's gonna... Thursday, it's me, UFO, so and Angelo, the kid. Whew. I don't really know how we're going to break up the night, but I'm sure we'll do some back to backs and just some. It's going to it's going to be if, if might... I had to, it's, it's going to be a scene, I think. We might need a. I'm going to put you guys on the spot. We might need a, like a Twitch stream for this. I think we have to put a camera in the booth. <laughs> we might. I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. I'm excited. I'll, if you like house music, I'd say you should probably come. Cause you're probably going to hear a bunch of house music hammers. Jersey club. Yeah. Jersey club. Oh, I mean, we play open format there. It's a lot of Jersey club and a lot, a lot of, of Jersey club, a lot of, uh, so I know Greg's been going pretty house has been going pretty, pretty ham on his Jersey club lately, Yeah, but he always has been. He makes, yeah. he makes some heaters guys. If you haven't listened to some of his stuff, it's great. We always had like a huge Jersey club fan base there. Yeah. Like the minute Jersey club starts, like circles start forming up. Like it right. happens every week. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. It'd funny. be nice to see that back. It will be nice. So let me ask you this. Um, now that like everything is wide open and like, all right, we're trying a Thursday party. Like what suggestions would you make for, for guys who are trying to grow their, their business right now? Like what's the move? What should they be doing? To, uh, well, who like DJs or DJs, DJs that like bar managers. Cause we, there's a lot of answers for both. <laughs> well, let's say DJs first. If you're trying to, well, first of all, First of all, go out and support the parties that are happening, right? So if you're listening to this and you know that Cream, UFO, so, and Angelo the Kid are playing Tally Ho on Thursday night, I'm going to support that party for multiple reasons. You're showing face to three major DJs in that specific market, right? It's a, I'm just using you guys as an example. Yeah. If, if you're in a different market and there's three other DJs or two other DJs playing a party, go support the party. See what they're doing. If that's successful, if you can replicate that, maybe not down the block, but if you want to go replicate that like a town over, that's fine, right? And, yeah. and that's, and, and just networking on those nights is, is paramount to being successful. Um, you know, if, if you're not booked out every Friday and Saturday, maybe you make a connection and you go get booked. That's how Greg got booked out with us. Yeah. He was supporting that Thursday night Tally Ho party. Yeah. Um, and I think just seeing what works, that's kind of how we, you know, we see what works in, in venues and, and hopefully our venues follow suit. Right. And then you grab ideas and like, okay, well they do that. Well, well we can elevate that and do that a little bit yeah. this way. You know, I think it's worth it's worth having the conversation with whatever connections in in the vet, in the the manager owner space that you have of trying to do something else, trying to do you know like a Sunday party or a Thursday party or whatever. So when I was in Morristown, we had a strong Thursday night party for a long time. Um, it wound up petering out uh, because I think next door was doing dollar beers. So they wound up getting the younger crowd and we kind of pivoted and tried to market things to an older audience. So like, you kind of have to know what's going on in your market, what's going on in your bar particularly yeah. and not be afraid to face it full, uh, full on and be like, okay, well we're failing at the open format 
teenage, not teenage, um, like early twenties music. And we have to figure something else out and get creative. Yeah. Like that's the stuff. If you want to be successful in, in, on those off nights, creativity, not just like have bingo night or, um, or trivia or something like yeah, that. Like, like you try throwing a Jersey club party, try throwing like something that no one else is doing. Right. And it's very hard to do. You and yeah. I tried it with it's like hard. doing like deep house nights on it. We tried to do like a Sunday, a couple Sunday one-offs. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. It's not easy to do. Um, but in order to try to like show value at, at your venues that you are, that, that you already have a relationship with, those are the things you have to show that creativity because it shows that you yeah. care about their venue. You're trying to make money for them and not just taking money from them. Yeah. I think, I think showing face is, is such an important thing too. Cause I'm, I'm thinking about it more and it's like, not even with us, but with any other groups of DJs or promoters who are booking DJs, like every day we're getting new gigs and new accounts and we need to book a lot of DJs. And if you're present and around and checking in, you're more likely to get gigs because yeah. like stuff has been popping up for us literally every day. Like something new is, is coming into the, to, into the pipeline. And if it's not us, it's somebody else. Right. I'm not even talking about us. Gigs. Like right. any, any other group right. or promoters. Just, just show up. <laughs> yeah. Just show up. Um, that's a hundred percent true. It's something that I'm not doing here. And that's why I'm not book getting booked down here. You right. know? It's just something very easy. Well, everything that's any nightlife that's popping off is what is over an hour away from me. But, but that is, it's, that's the truth. Like if you got to show up, if you don't show up, you're not getting booked. You're not getting booked because having a good Instagram is part of it, right? Making sure you have a well curated Instagram is part of it. Making sure you're putting out music, make sure your SoundCloud's tight. That's all very, very important. We promote that up, not promote that. We, we preach that constantly but that's only going to get you so far. It's yeah. not going to get you in the booth most of the time. Right. That'll be if, like, if you, that's if you the come tool. out with a heater and ultra picks it up and it right. becomes that's a different story, different story. <laughs> right. But like if somebody comes and introduces themselves to me, the first thing I'm doing is looking at their Instagram. And I always say that. Right. Just to go see what it looks like, because if their Instagram looks nice and I can maybe go see where they've been playing or used to play at least, or, what music they're making. Like that's important for but someone a, that's trying to book a DJ. You may or may not know. It's a you, piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Showing up and then have all that other clean stuff afterward is, is so important, man. So yeah, right. yeah. I I mean, you're, you're coming off a long weekend, so we could, we can, you're coming off a long weekend. I, it's Tuesday and you are going into Another yeah. long weekend. Like, I, I we're, actually we're want to start doing this um, at the end of every podcast. Just kind of give you guys a heads up of where I'm going to be. So if you are off or you want to come hang out um, this week, as I mentioned earlier, we're doing the, the Tally Ho Thursday party. So it's always a huge industry night. It's half price off your drinks, which makes it even better. Yeah. Um, myself, Angel the Kid, UFO. So I'm sure a bunch of the other get down guys are going to be in the building. Um, if you're off, if you're around, come hang out, pop in for a drink. Um, don't get me too drunk, please. Um, Friday, back at DJ's for happy hour, uh, four to eight. I'm sure I'm interested to see what it's going to be like. Is there going to be 800 people there at four o'clock again? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I think there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. And then Saturday, Wicked Wolf afternoon at four o'clock. Also the Ashford in Jersey City at night. Also on Saturday, something else I want to mention. Um, we are doing a little Get Down DJ's uh, volunteer day. And we're working with one of the promoters slash regulars at Wicked Wolf. Um, he works at um, with kids from PS188 in the Bronx. Um, so we're going to go hang out with some, um, some kids. We're going to play some music. We're going to play some sports with them. Um, just, you know, spend some time with some kids that could use, you know, yeah, some, some could... positivity in their lives, right? You know, maybe right. teach, teach some guys how to DJ. If anyone is interested in joining us, um, we're going to be leaving from my place in North Bergen. And we're also going to be taking a car from North Bergen. I'm sorry, from Hoboken. 
it's early. We're probably leaving around eight o'clock in the morning. So I know it's rough and it is a sacrifice, but literally we're doing it for the kids. So right. if anyone wants to join us, um, please hit me up. I would love you guys for it. We really want to kind of sh- have a strong crew of, of people coming out. So yeah, it's really important that we, that now that we're able to, you know, get back in, in, in rooms with people, uh, that we give back. It's something that we were really aiming for prior to the pandemic. And, and we hit it a few times and, and, uh, we're going to really focus on doing that and not just, not just taking all the time. Yeah. I think it's something that's going to, again, something that's part of our core values and it's important to us. So we're going to be doing more of this stuff like this. So, yeah. All right. Good stuff. Good episode. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad, you know, we, we had a positive, a positive uh, week here. And a positive episode. We didn't bitch and complain the whole time. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for checking out this episode of the get down. My name is cream. Yeah. W. See you guys next week. Peace. Later, guys.